News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Hello there and a very good morning. This is Newsline. I'm Sonali Wanigapadige. And joining us uh, this morning is Vijitha Herat. He's uh, the Janata Vimukti uh, Peramuna Propaganda Secretary. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Herat. Yes, good morning, Sonali. It's very nice to see you on an English program because you tend to avoid English programs uh, and stick to uh, the vernacular medium of Singhala. <laughs> there, there, is, there is no any reason for that. Uh, actually, uh, it is better. Yes, but it's uh, great to have you with us. Now, uh, we've seen the Janata Vimukti Peramuna uh, before this uh, government of good governance uh, came into power. The Janata Vimukti Peramuna was very um, uh, vehement in its protesting and uh, we saw a lot of activism from the JVP. But this time around, the JVP seems to be rather silent. Uh, your lead, Anur Kumar Adisanayaka, uh, is also silent. Uh, is there any reason for this? Are you happy with uh, the change that was uh, brought in? <laughs> Actually, that is not correct. Uh, we are strong and we are doing our politics in, uh, in a proper way. If there is a good thing, we are supporting. If there is a bad thing, we are objecting. That is our principle. We are not uh, objecting all things. Uh, during the Rajapaksa regime, actually in the end of the Rajapaksa regime, uh, we uh, did our uh, strong objections uh, in the parliament and out of the parliament. Actually at that time we wanted to change that regime. Uh, but there was no any assurance about the new government and good governance, the so-called good governance. And we, uh, we did not have any, uh, uh, any positive uh, thinking about the, the new president and new uh, rule. That's why we told during the last uh, presidential election period close the Rajapaksa uh, boutique and we have no any confidence about the new regime or new uh, president. But uh, now the present government uh, has spent uh, two and a half years. There are some changes in the democratic way. Uh, we could have implemented uh, the 19th Amendment and we could uh, have reduced the executive powers to some extent. And likewise, we did some democratic changes. It is better for the country. But as far as concerns the economy and the other uh, political culture, uh, we cannot satisfy with this uh, so-called uh, good governance. Therefore, we are uh, objecting uh, issue by issue, not at all. If there is a good thing, uh, we are supporting. Whatever the government, it, uh, sometime it may be UNP or it may be uh, SLFP. If it is uh, good for the country, we are supporting. If it is bad, we are objecting. Today, uh, also, we are doing, we are objecting uh, strongly some uh, bad things uh, which were uh, introduced by the government. But the biggest controversy came about after the government of good governance came into power, which was uh, the central bank bond issue. Yeah. I mean, right now, uh, it is at the stage of a presidential commission of inquiry. I mean, these are state resources being uh, utilized, being wasted just in vain because of uh, one incident, which has cost the country millions and billions of rupees. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, we were the uh, party uh, first of all uh, to object the uh, bond issue uh, the central bank and our uh, parliament member Sunil Hanun Nethi he uh, opposed uh, the bond issue first of all he was the person who uh, said to public first of all about the uh, bond deal from that uh, point we objected and we raised so many uh, times against the bond deal. Uh, today, uh, we have completed, uh, we have prepared a COP report regarding the bond deal. And there are many facts uh, in that report. Uh, but the problem is government has not taken any steps to, uh, uh, to stop uh, 
that uh, dealing with the uh, uh, share market and the uh, economy, especially the uh, the perpetual treasuries uh, company. That that was the company who uh, directly involved that deal. We proposed to the government. We submit uh, six proposals to the government to take immediate actions against the uh, bond issue. In that proposals, we uh, proposed to stop uh, the perpetual treasuries companies all uh, deals. That government did not do that. And uh, now they are that company is spending their money in various uh, things. They are uh, starting um, some media uh, institutions, uh, the print media and the electronic media, and they are start they are trying to starting uh, distributors company. Actually, they are using that money uh, in the black uh, market. They are uh, producing the black money using that uh, people's money. It is very uh, unfortunate uh, thing. But we can't stop calling it unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, there, there can't be a culture of impunity. Yeah. Now, a stop to alcohol was one of the key promises made by this government also. And the Sunday Times recently reported uh, that Arjun Aloysius's liquor producing firm WM Mendes & Co. has proposed to construct a distillery at Kalkuda in the Batiklo district. The official website of WM Mendes & Company shows the chairman of the organization is uh, Arjun uh, Joseph Aloysius. Now, uh, as the Janatha Vimukti Peramuna, uh, mm. Mr. Vijitha Herat, how do you view this? I mean, what is this culture of impunity that that we are looking at? Yes, uh, uh, not only that, uh, the government is uh, going to give that distress company uh, the more concessions. Actually, uh, in that area, the Eastern Province, uh, if some uh, company starts some uh, project in those areas, those companies uh, will be given uh, more concessions by the government. Such type of uh, company also will be given uh, those uh, concessions. The, that company use the black money and government give them uh, more concessions. Then they produced alcohol and they distribute among the people especially who are living in the eastern province. Most of uh, uh, people uh, in the uh, eastern province are Tamil and Muslims and they were the war affected people. Now uh, the, that company is going to uh, use that money to uh, produce the alcohol and distribute alcohol among the people. It is, uh, it is the deteriorating of our culture also. Our, not only the political culture, our, we have a, a Sri Lankan culture. Uh, using that money, they are, uh, they are, uh, they, are uh, they are doing some harmful uh, things uh, to destroy our. Uh, so Sri Lanka also. is trying to go into a knowledge-based economy with education and uh, other uh, accelerated development projects. So um, this is a complete contrast to that situation. Uh, how is the government supposed to react in such a situation? I mean, mm -hmm. as the Janata Vimukti Peramuna, uh, what do you say? Yes, we are, we are opposing. We are saying our uh, we are. Uh, saying our ideas and we are posing in the parliament and uh, out of the parliament but the problem is government is doing that because government has majority in the parliament they have uh, two-third majority in the parliament they, are, they, they have the government we have only six members in the parliament though we are posing all those things they are doing that is the uh, situation in our country that, therefore I think people must uh, learn something uh, we must learn some lesson from this uh, this type of uh, business. If we had a uh, strong power uh, in the parliament, we could have stopped that. But using our six members' power, we cannot stop that. We can uh, we can oppose it. We can made a, we can make a good uh, awareness program among the people, but. Without considering those uh, objections, government is doing that. It's in interesting that you spoke about awareness. Yeah. So uh, something that we find is that uh, the larger public, 
the masses if you will are not aware of the intricacies the finer points of these controversies for example the central bank bond issue then the google loan project the, since these are technical areas the general public at large have uh, a difficulty in understanding the uh, the, the controversies be behind them so don't you think that the janata abhimukti peraman also uh, has a responsibility and a duty to the general public to create this awareness because yes. you have support from the grassroots level, uh, level uh, public as well yes we have a uh, uh, grassroots level uh, power and we are doing that actually we are we know we have a responsibility about that that's why we are doing that uh, but we think it is not enough because Uh, government power is more than uh, our power because they have uh, state media powers and the government official powers and uh, military power the all powers uh, belongs to the government therefore using our grassroots power uh, we cannot stop that we can start a awareness program already we have started that uh, i think we can increase step by step Uh, when it comes to parliamentarians the 225 parliamentarians representing the people uh, the people's interest in parliament uh, something that we find is that there's a lot of bickering but there is no talk about policy so these are the policy makers but there is no uh, policy being discussed at all in parliament how do you view this what is this deteriorating trend that we are seeing actually uh, it has started Uh, in 1977 uh, before that there were uh, but after the 1977 the deteriorating of the political culture is uh, rapidly uh, increased that uh, because we have read about statesmen in sri lanka but yeah. now it's very difficult to uh, uh, sort of uh, use that word yeah. uh, if he Uh, analyze the economic situation in our country uh, it is a reality to deteriorate, uh, uh, deteriorate of the political culture if there is a good uh, economic situation the stable economic situation in the country then the political uh, culture also developed in a good manner but if uh, when the economy is deteriorating the political culture also deteriorating that is the reality uh, I agree with you. Uh, our political culture uh, has been uh, collapsing and uh, deteriorating uh, day by day because of the uh, because of this uh, market economy. Yes, but we do have a wealth of individuals who are very knowledgeable, who are professionals. Yeah. So why aren't they in parliament? Uh, that is the. people's fault if the people of our country uh, could have uh, selected the proper person to the parliament i think we uh, will not ho hope such a situation in this parliament uh, that's why i uh, explained you earlier the people also uh, has a responsibility the they have a responsibility to select the proper person uh, to parliament parliament now the people are talking about parliament is a joke mm. but who vote for them the people vote for them the professionals and uh, the intellectuals uh, are in the outside they are silent they can they have no power for example Uh, 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 representing our party, mm -hmm. the former auditor uh, general, Mr. Maya Dunne, has uh, uh, elected for the parliament. But from the, the from the national list, from the national area. list, yes. not from by the people. Yes, he. Uh, but people uh, did not vote such a people, such sure. a person. that is the unfortunate uh, political situation in our country therefore we have to change the economic system uh, and the political system also and uh, without changing the economic and political uh, culture mm. 
we cannot uh, hope such a, a good situation. Uh, let's also talk about the human rights uh, situation in the country, given the fact that uh, the sessions at uh, the UNHRC are presently uh, underway in uh, Geneva. Uh, the state has been asking for a two-year period to uh, complete uh, its, its responsibilities under the resolution. Uh, today, Dr. Harsha De Silva, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, is uh, due to make a statement uh, to the sessions as well. Um, now, Sri Lanka has been uh, talking about uh, transitional justice, uh, achieving true reconciliation. Mm -hmm. However, we're losing time. People... Yeah. Uh, especially uh, the war-affected uh, Sri Lankans uh, in the north, in the east, they are looking for solutions, they are looking for reparation. Um, has this been achieved? Protecting human rights is a, due, a responsibility of the government. Uh, without considering the uh, UNHRC uh, uh, resolution, we must, as a government, we must protect uh, the rights of the people in our country. Uh, but this government and the former government uh, do not do that. They do something according to the resolution. As a party, a JVP, that is not our stand. Though uh, Human Rights Council say or not, we must protect our people's right. But if you go to that uh, resolution, actually the government has submitted this uh, resolution not alone. Uh, that resolution was prepared by the USA government and Sri Lankan government. Co sponsored. That's a joint resolution. Mm. In that resolution, the government has agreed so many things to prepare a new constitution and uh, implement uh, the hybrid court. Uh, then Although there are different views, opposing views with regard to the hybrid, hybrid court, court. Uh, with the president making his uh, stance clear uh, that uh, foreign judges will not be uh, used. But uh, he would have said uh, that uh, before submitting that resolution. Now he is saying that and uh, today the Foreign Minister Mangal Samaravisa Vira also said that uh, no, no, there is no any chance to come the foreign judges to Sri Lanka. According to our constitution, there is no uh, clause uh, to come foreign judges to our country. But they have uh, understood uh, before uh, submit that uh, resolution. <laughs> they were the people who prepared that resolution. The government uh, prepared that resolution, joint uh, resolution. But in that resolution, there is a clause. There is a chance to come the foreign judges because there is a clause. But now uh, they are saying, no, no, according to our constitution, there is no uh, uh, any chance to come foreign judges. But Mr. Judges. Herat, the responsibility of the government and the head of state uh, is to ensure that the sovereignty of the country is protected because we have our local national level mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, isn't it incumbent upon the head of state and the government uh, in that case to make sure that the structure of the country itself is also uh, secured and safeguarded? Yes, that is the uh, responsibility of the um, uh, leader of the uh, state. Uh, the, especially the executive president must uh, protect our sovereignty and territorial integrity in our country. The, my question is why the president did not uh, see that clause before submitting that uh, resolution. He must, uh, uh, he could, he should have removed that clause from that uh, resolution. But, but he moving did not forward, do that. moving forward, yeah. how do you think that we should go about as a country yeah. to um, go towards, move towards transitional justice and true reconciliation? Actually, uh, without considering the resolution, we as a government must start a reconciliation uh, program. Uh, just after the war uh, in uh, 2009, 26th of uh, May in 2009, as a party, we uh, submitted a proposal. In that proposal, 
we uh, clearly mentioned that implement the truth and reconciliation commission mm. before the UNHRC uh, proposed that as a party we proposed that the Raja, then the Rajapaksa regime did not care about that after that we uh, again uh, mentioned that proposal to this government but they did not do that after passing that resolution in the uh, council uh, Geneva Council, they said that yes, we are going to implement a reconciliation, a truth and reconciliation commission. That's why we said to you, to the people, uh, without uh, considering their uh, intervention, interference, we uh, as a country start a uh, domestic uh, system. Mm. But there was a domestic system. There was the LLRC. There was the uh, commission, presidential commission to look into missing persons. Yeah. There were local mechanisms adopted. Yes. So all you're saying they, they were not successful? No, all those things were come after interference of the UNHRC. The, uh, that's called the commission. The former government started that commission. It was also started uh, after the Darusman uh, report not uh, uh, individually as a country we could have done it today so also, there is a need to move towards real reconciliation is what you're saying yes actually it let's is, also is talk our, about our system let's also talk about constitutional reform uh, this government came in saying that uh, they will bring in a new constitution mm -hmm. however uh, the, the there are six sub uh, subcommittee reports um, however there is uh, no movement on it now Yes, what is the reason for the delay? Now, the SLFE as a party, they are talking about, no, no, we are not going for a referendum. We don't uh, like to go before referendum. Without referendum, how can we uh, abolish the executive system? But the, as a candidate, the common candidate, the present president has clearly promised to the people uh, they abolish the executive presidency uh, from our constitution, from our the, uh, the political system. But uh, now they are talking about no, no, no. It is need not. President does not say anything. But uh, some senior uh, cabinet ministers of the SLFP, John Siniratna, S. B. Sanayaka, and uh, so many senior ministers, uh, clearly said that no, we are not going uh, for a referendum. That means they are not willing to abolish the executive system. I think uh, it is wrong. Uh, uh, before the election, before the presidential election, uh, the president, Maitri Palasi Sena, has clearly promised to the people to abolish the executive system. And but he has curtailed his powers uh, yes. after the 19th Amendment. However, uh, the constitutional reform process, mm. uh, there was a steering committee appointed um, and there was an entire process with yeah. the, the parliament being uh, converted to a constitution assembly. Mm. Uh, but still there is a delay yeah. and that can't be excused, can it? Yes, because of that reason. Now, uh, some political parties, not only some parties, especially the SLFP. They are uh, trying to retain the executive presidency system uh, in the uh, new constitution also. It is a violation of the mandate. Uh, that's why the uh, reason for the delay. There are some other issues as far as concerned, the ethnic uh, issue. There are some contradiction among uh, various political parties. But there is a mechanism. There is a, There are six committees in the parliament. All those uh, reports have uh, submitted already and only the steering committee must uh, bring the last, uh, the final decision. The main uh, problem of the delay is uh, uh, the contradiction of the abolishing of the executive system. Uh, Mr. Vijita Herat, uh, you have spoken extensively across different forums about the corruption and fraud uh, yeah. perpetuated by governments, uh, not just one government, but uh, throughout your uh, political career, you have been rather vocal, which is why um, I am asking you this question. Um, 
even with regard to this government, mm -hmm. uh, whenever there has been controversy, uh, we have seen you uh, at press briefings, media briefings, addressing uh, the public. Now, my question to you is, there are moves to suppress the media, mm -hmm. even today. Although the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, in the judgment, the judges of the Supreme Court uh, clearly uh, stated that it was a violation, uh, one particular clause in the uh, draft bill was a clear violation of the people's sovereignty, uh, there are still moves to suppress the media. But the media is the fourth, uh, fourth pillar of government. And it is the media that uh, always... Uh, brings to the public controversies, etc. How do you view this? And what should be done to make sure that there is no media suppression? Uh, all governments of our country uh, try to suppress the media. Uh, at the beginning of the government, they are very familiar to media. But day by day, they are, uh, they are starting their uh, objections uh, regarding all media, not only the uh, local media, but also the uh, international media also. That is the behavior of the governments. This is happening today. That's why uh, we uh, proposed to uh, implement the Independence Media Commission. If there is an independent media commission, then they can uh, take decision and they can control how to uh, behave uh, the all types of media and how to protect the independence of the media. Uh, we, we, not, we are not believing uh, after implementing the independence commission, uh, the, all those things will be finished. No, but uh, some extent we can reduce. Uh, but government did not agree with that. Uh, in 2001, I think the probation uh, government period also we proposed. There are there was so many commissions, the independent commissions, judiciary commission, state commission, police commission. Likewise, we proposed to implement uh, the media independent media commission. I, today also we are proposing that if we can uh, implement the, the independence media commission, then we can. Uh, change that situation in some extent, not at all. But you agree that there are moves to suppress and shut down the voice of, of the media, which is in fact the voice of the public? No, uh, it can never be done. Though government, uh, all those government is try, uh, uh, are trying to do that, but uh, it can never happen because the voice of the people cannot stop. Uh, that is the reality, that is the truth. Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, on Newsline, uh, Mr. Vijita Herat, and, uh, and in indeed a pleasure to have you join us on an English program. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we wrap up uh, uh, Newsline. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Yes, have a great you. day.